So in this video, we'll explore the mysterious deacon from Prometheus, followed by a discussion on how it would fare against the classic xenomorph. The deacon, also known as a proto-xenomorph, is a xenomorph species, most likely created by the engineers to be used as a weapon, until it backfired. It lacks a tail and has no inner jaw, while not a fully formed one like the classic xeno anyway, but instead has a more primitive jaw mechanism, where a second set of teeth slide forward out the mouth, similar to a goblin shark. You could say that while the classic Xeno has four jaws total, the Deacon only has three. The initial stage in the Deacon's life cycle comes from a black liquid known as Chemical A0, a biological weapon and evolutionary agent created by the engineers. The substance has a unique reaction with every animal genome it encounters and was designed to induce genetic chaos. Delivered via ingestion or inhalation, it's capable of mass destruction. Once the host is infected with the deadly pathogen, they experience a rapid and painful genetic transformation. After Holloway ingested the pathogen, thanks to David, he transmitted his infection to Shaw via insemination during intercourse. Holloway later died and Shaw became pregnant with a rapidly evolving creature incubating inside of her body. Upon successful removal of the creature during a caesarean section in the Pauling Medpod 720i, the trilobite, which is basically a deacon facehugger, was quarantined in a lab and rapidly matured into a massive creature. The trilobite managed to grab an engineer while it chased Shaw, inserting a tube-like organ down the engineer's throat, a behavior similar to the facehugger. And just like a facehugger, it later dies after a successful impregnation. So anyway, the deacon embryo is orally injected by the trilobite, and after a short while, the deacon is born. It bursts out of the engineer from its chest and abdomen, using its pointy head to puncture and force its way out of the body. This contrasts greatly to the xenomorph birth, which bursts out the chest as a larvae and later goes through metamorphosis to become an adult, whereas the deacon appears to come out almost fully formed. Whether this is an infant deacon or the fully grown one is unknown, but it's probable that it grows even bigger. In John Spate's original script for Prometheus, titled Alien Engineers, the film's final creature was originally intended to be a jockey xenomorph, dubbed the Ultramorph. The Ultramorph was to engage Shaw in a lengthy running battle across the surface of LV-426. However, the creature was ultimately changed to the deacon, Concept art of the Ultramorph produced for the film more closely resembled the traditional Xenomorph than the creature used in the final movie. There is some confusion over whether or not the Deacon is intended to be some kind of Xenomorph, largely brought about by the script revisions and as a result of the production team occasionally referring to the creature as a Protomorph or Proto-Xenomorph, terms carried over from earlier script drafts. A mural of a fully grown xenomorph resembling a drone can be seen on the wall of the engineer temple on LV-223, indicating that the xenomorphs already exist by the time of Prometheus. However, the creature in the mural possesses qualities of the deacon, such as its arms, which lack the biomechanical details of the traditional xenomorph and instead are smoother and more biological in nature. The film's co-writer Damon Lindelof has stated, I felt that the punchline of Prometheus was going to be that there is human DNA in what we have come to know as the human xenomorph. While one could argue that his use of the word was is an indication that this concept was dropped from the film, the deacon's inclusion as a cameo in the film's final scene does seem to indicate the creature's importance. In addition, the events leading to the deacon's creation are a clear indication that it is in fact derived from the genetic material of Holloway and Shaw exposed to the black goo, meaning that there is in fact human DNA in its genome possible nod to the fact that xenomorphs take on the characteristics of their host. In the film's original script, an engineer did become impregnated by a facehugger, leading to an engineer-spawned xenomorph, although this was later changed when 20th Century Fox pressed Ridley Scott to remove the xenomorph from the story altogether. In the commentary of the movie, the production crew and even Ridley Scott himself acknowledged the creature by calling it a form of xenomorph. In fact, in one of the commentaries, a member of the production crew refers to the deacon as a young xenomorph queen, and that it was not something intended to be created by the engineers, but was something new, special, and totally unpredicted. The creature's production name became known as The Deacon, because according to director Ridley Scott, its head looks like a bishop's mitre. The name could also be a metaphor, derived from the fact that while the deacon is a means to an end for the engineers, they're not quite on the level of the traditional xenomorph. In modern Christianity, a deacon is an ordained minister of an order, ranking below that of a priest. The deacon was originally intended to have more screen time following its birth, pursuing Sean David to the second juggernaut ship, and narrowly missing them as they leave the planet. 
In the original plans for Prometheus, Fire and Stone, Dark Horse Comics were going to showcase the Deacons, with the story mainly focusing on them as the primary alien adversary. However, 20th Century Fox asked Dark Horse to remove them for fears that their inclusion may interfere with the then undeveloped Prometheus sequel. They were replaced with Xeno Warriors. As for the Deacon facing off against the classic Xeno, it lacks a useful inner jaw and bladed tail, which means the Xeno XX121 would probably destroy it. But let's not forget that the Deacon is much larger when it's born, unlike the Chestburster, who has to run and hide somewhere. So, do you have any more information on the Deacon? I'd love to hear it. Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Make sure you click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Also, please check out my other videos. I'll see you later.